his own soul in the end. And what shall it profit you, friends, if you gain all the sports knowledge, all the sports jerseys, you play fantasy football, all your friends think you're cool, you go to the game, you're on the 50-yard line, pay $250 for your ticket. What shall it profit you, friends? If you're the greatest Titans fan in the world, you go to every single game, but you end up in hell, fire, in the end. What will it profit you? I'll tell you the same thing the Apostle John said in the last verse of 1 John. Keep yourself from idols. Amen. So many of you, you idolize sports stars, you buy their jerseys, you cheer for them like crazy, as if your whole life depends upon it, as if it is your whole life. And for many of you, football season is your whole life. You can't wait till you get to football season again. You can't wait to preseason camp. You can't wait to the Super Bowl, then a Pro Bowl, then a draft. You can't wait for these things. And every Sunday morning, you can't wait to sit down with your beer in your hand and watch three, four, five, six. Who knows how many football games you're watching every day on your big screen TV. And you have to, your whole life depends upon it. But the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, your set-apartness. That's the will of God for you. Your sanctification. That you should abstain from sexual morality. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the heathen who do not know God. And so many of you, have to, that defines your life. You, you, your life is given over to the passion of lust, of cheering for your favorite team, of cheering for your favorite players, buying their jerseys, buying their memorabilia, painting your face and cheering for them in the passion of the lust, just like the heathen who do not know God. Yet many of you will claim to know God. You claim to know God while you glory in man. You claim to know God while you... You will praise men who don't know God and don't love God. You'll claim to know God. Maybe you'll go to church on Sunday. And, and, and while the pastor is preaching his sermon on Sunday, maybe he's even a good pastor trying to, to get you to live holy and save your soul. And you're, all you're thinking about in your head is football, 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 football. Wickedness. And many of you will spend hundreds of dollars per game on your tickets, on your food, on your parking, on your gas. You'll spend hours sitting in traffic, getting a parking spot, in the game itself. All for the praise of man. I ask you, what glory does God get from this football game? What glory does God get from any of these football players you idolize? What glory does God get from grown men dressed in tights throwing around a dead pigskin? What glory does God get in that? The answer is zero. Zero. This is all for the praise of man. Putting men on a big screen in the stadium, 70,000 people cheering for man, not cheering for God. Most of you won't say a word to God all day. You won't give him any praises. You won't sing any praise songs to him. You won't pray to him, but you'll come here and praise man. Blasphemous. Blasphemous. Romans 1 talks about such people who worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is forever blessed. Amen. The only person in the world who deserves your adoration, who deserves your time, your affection, your money, your praise, is God Almighty. He's the only one. None of these men in here died for you. None of these men in here shed their precious blood for you on a Roman cross. None of these men in here were beaten and bruised and crucified for your sins that you might have eternal life. Only the Lord of glory has done such things. Only Jesus Christ humbled himself in the form of a servant, considering himself with no reputation for your sake, who gave himself up for your sins, that he might deliver you from this present evil age. Only Christ has done that for you. 
Yet most of you, whether you admit it or not, you reject Christ, you reject His commandments, you reject that He commands you to don't be, not be a drunkard. Most of you reject that Christ says to not be a fornicator, to not be a liar, to not be an idolater. You know what an idolater is? Not someone who bows down to wooden statues. An idolater is anyone who worships something above and beyond the creator God, the God of the, the, God of the Bible. And many of you will worship Chris Johnson. Many of you will worship Jake Locker. Many of you worship all the other people you come here to watch today because they can run a football five yards per carry. So what? Big deal. That amazes you? That a man get over a thousand yards on the ground in one year and 16 games? So what? He didn't shed his blood for you. Chris Johnson will sit out for millions of more dollars so he can get it all from you. You know where that million dollar paychecks come from? You! The fans who pay $100 per ticket like fools. That's who the million dollar paychecks come from. From you. And many of you will complain about it. Many of you complain when a football player sits out in protest of his $5 million per year contract because he wants $10 million per year. His greed and covetousness, you support him in that by coming to these games and paying $100 per ticket. Christ commands you to repent. Christ commands you to give up your sin. No Christian should come to such places except to preach the gospel. When you come to such places, you support violence, support idolatry, support drunkenness. As I was walking up here today, I was walking up and I saw a whole road is closed down for this dumb game. I wonder when the last time they closed the road down for Jesus Christ. When the last time they closed the road down for the preaching of the gospel. When the last time God was exalted in an LP field instead of a football player or a country music star or some other nonsense. Jesus Christ deserved to be exalted. Not a football star, not a football team. Jesus Christ deserves the hundreds of dollars you spend on this, this foolish game. Jesus Christ deserves the affection you give to these football players and the time and attention you give to it. I wonder what happens to the United States. If the people who watch football spend all their time and affection and adoration and money on that, I wonder what happens to the United States of America if those people instead spent that time, that affection, that adoration, that money on the Lord Jesus Christ and spreading his gospel this nation would change overnight. Because this nation is full of a bunch of pigskin dollars, those who idolize football, who idolize football players, who can't wait to see those football players, grown men in tights, with a pigskin in their hand, cross over that white line, yay! So what? You think that's amazing? Wait till you see Christ part the sky. Wait till you see Christ return in all his glory with the eyes of fire and light and rain is so bright it'll blind you. Wait till you see Christ part the sky who will not come back as a suffering lamb but will come back as a roaring lion of Judah to devour his adversary. Now that'll be amazing. More amazing than a touchdown. More amazing than a field goal. More amazing than a thousand yards in a season on the ground. More amazing than a $10 million paycheck per year. Those things are amazing, but Jesus Christ is amazing. It's amazing to me that Christ, the Holy One, would step down from the glories of heaven, consider himself of no reputation for your sake. It's amazing to me that Christ would give himself up for our sins. It's amazing to me that Christ would go like a lamb before the shears is silent. He would go and allow his own creation to beat him and bruise him and crucify him. They would be dead, he would be buried, and he raised him the third day, defeating sin and death. That's amazing. Rising from the grave, rising from the dead, that's amazing. Scoring a touchdown, making a pink skin cross a white line after running 100 yards, whatever it may be, is not amazing. So many of you, 
You're amazed by such little things. But you know what's really amazing? When God transforms a sinner into a saint. That's amazing. And that's God's offer to you. If you'll give up your sins, including your idolatry of football and football players, if you'll give up your fornication, if you'll give up your drunkenness, if you'll give up your lust and your porn watching, if you'll give up all your sins and come to Christ, He will cleanse you, He will change you, He will transform you. Now that's amazing, friends. That's the amazing grace of God. Not a football game. I implore you, if you consider yourself a Christian here today, to tear up your football ticket, go home and seek God. And see what God thinks about this football game when you come into it. I can tell you this, He'll give you something much better to do with your time, and your money, and your attention. Much better than watching grown men run around the field and tight. All you men who are leading your your sons and these other young men who are with you into this football idolatry, you're going to give an account. You got to lead them to the cross. You got to lead them to serve and worship Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That Jesus Christ, who was wounded for your transgressions, who was bruised for your iniquities, the chastisement for His peace, your peace upon Him. Now tell me, which one school player did that for you? Tell me, which football player here, the ones you idolize and praise and wear their jerseys for, tell me which one died for you? Tell me which one was bruised for your iniquity. Tell me which one was wounded for your transgression. Tell me which one was chastised by sinful men for your peace. Yeah, they may get injured, they may get hurt, they may get shed some blood in which one, but not doing it for you. They're doing it for their own glory. They want to be in the record books. They want to make millions of dollars. They want to be in the Hall of Fame. The only person that deserves fame from us is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach. Him we teach. Warning every man. And preaching every man. And all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. You young men are probably football players, aren't you? Don't be turned aside by your idolatry of sports, by your idolatry of yourself and wanting fame from people. Don't be turned aside and follow these football players. You follow Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ deserves you following Him. These football players have deserved you following them. Young men who play football these days want to follow football players on Twitter and on Facebook. The only person who deserves your following is Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, the life. And there's a narrow path to life. And there's few who find it. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction and many enter in. But narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way that leads to life, and there's few who find it. I'm going to tell you this, if you're going to this day tonight, there's a good chance you're on the broad way. There's a good chance you're on the broad way. You're not a difficult path. You're on the broad path that leads to destruction. All the things that men exalt, God will bring low. All the things that men bring down low, God's going to exalt. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You say, well, I'm proud of my Titans. That's going to be brought low. I'm proud of that touchdown. That's going to be brought low. All the things that praise men, God will bring low someday. And every knee will bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Many of you may call yourself Christians. You may think you're Christians because you go to a building every Sunday and Wednesday. You call a church. You may call yourself a Christian because you go to a building. You're no more a Christian by going to a building on Sunday and Wednesday than I am a Whopper by going to Burger King. 
A true Christian is someone who serves Jesus Christ, who follows Him, who obeys Him, who loves the Lord their God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loves their neighbor as themselves. And how do you know if you know Christ or not? Well, you can ask yourself this question. Do you keep His commandments? If you don't keep His commandments, you don't love Him. Those are the facts. But those who keep His commandments, they show their love for God by keeping His commandments. 1 John 2, 3-4 says, Now by this we know that we know Him, if we keep His commandments. He who says, I know Him, and does not keep His commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in Him. But whoever keeps His word, truly the love of God is perfected in Him, by this we know that we are in Him. So how do you know you know Him? That's Jesus. How do you know you know Jesus? How do you know you're in Jesus and you have salvation if you keep His commandments? For those who say they know Christ, but are football idolaters. Those who say they know Christ and are drunkards. It's amazing to me. People are walking around with a beer in their hand with a paper bag around. It. They're ashamed of it. Well, if you're ashamed of your beer drinking in front of people, how do you think you'll do before Jesus Christ? Your own conscience condemns you. If your conscience condemns you according to Romans 14, 23, then you're in sin. Beer guzzlers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Beer guzzlers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, I need to fear God. That's right. In Cleanest chapter 12, verse 13 and 14, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commands, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. You're a mocker and you're in big trouble, young man. Big trouble. Yeah, you ought to fear God. The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom. If you don't fear God, you have no knowledge. You have no wisdom because it's the beginning of knowledge and wisdom. You know, the way over here today, I saw a, a sign on the highway that says, Drive carefully, 643 deaths in the last year in Kentucky. They're using fear tactics to get you to drive better, to preserve your life. And here I am telling you to fear God, not to preserve your natural life, but preserve your eternal life. Preserve your very soul from going to hell forever. And people will complain about it. Listen, if you have no problem with the government, with the state of Tennessee, using fear tactics to drive better so you can save your life or maybe someone else's life, surely you should have no problem. With Jesus saying in Matthew 10, fear not him who can kill the body and nothing else. Rather, fear him, fear him who's able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Yes, fear him. Hell is a terrible place. You ought to fear God. You ought to fear God for the same reason that people in the courthouse today, where I preached earlier, fear, fear the judge. They know they've broken the law of the land, and they know they're at the mercy of a just judge. At the same reason, you ought to fear God. You know you've broken this law. You know you've sinned. You know you've lied, stolen, lusted, gotten drunk, had sex outside of marriage. You've been covetous. You've been greedy. You've been idolatrous. So because you've broken God's law, and because God is good and just, it will bring you to fear Him. In the Bible says, obedient children, not conforming yourself to your former lust, as in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. For it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. Listen to that again. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. God's going to judge impartially. God's not going to judge you on a curve. You know, the school year started again recently for many people. And 
When you go to school, sometimes people will judge, the, the uh, teachers will judge partially. It's not impartial, they'll judge on the curve. You know, the highest person got a 90, bump them up to 100, everyone gets 10 points extra. God's not going to judge like that, friends. He's going to judge impartially. And He knows your thoughts. He knows your words. He knows your deeds. And because God sees all things, all things are before Him. Naked and bare before Him. You ought to deduct the whole time you're living on earth in fear. Hebrews 4.13 says, And there is no creature hidden from His sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of Him to whom we must give an account. Man, that will put some fear in you. Everything is naked and bare. Everything is open to the eyes to Him we must give an account to. He sees your lustful hearts and your lustful thoughts. He sees your covetous and your idolatrous heart. God sees all these things, friends. And you have to give an account to Him. And I fear for many of you that you're not ready to stand before God. You're not ready to give an account of your sins before God. And whether you are ready or not, God's going to call you to give an account, friends. And judgment day will be a terrible day for most people. But it doesn't have to be that way, friends. You can give up your sins, give up your idolatry, give up your drunkenness, give up your sex before marriage, give up your lying and your stealing, and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ who shed his blood for you on the cross, dying the just for the unjust to reconcile sinners back to God. He died the just for the unjust to reconcile you back to God. Because as long as you're a sinner, friends, you're an enemy of God. As long as you're a sinner, you're not reconciled to God. You're separated from God. Your sins have separated you from your creator, so you won't even hear your prayers, the Bible says. The first prayer of a sinner that God will pay attention to, will give heed to, is the prayer of a sinner that's broken-hearted, contrite, humble over their sin, realizing their sin, their hell-deserving sinner. That's what you need to realize. But all of you drunkards here today, all of you fornicators who are here today, all you sports idolaters who are here today, you need to repent. You're on your way to hell. You're on the broad path that leads to destruction. You need to go through a narrow gate. Again, a difficult path that leads to life. For there are few who find it. You want to be amongst those few. You don't want to be amongst the many who will go to destruction in the end. No, sir, we don't go to that nonsense. You to forsake your sins, sir. Sports idolatry is harmful to your soul. Sports idolatry is harmful to your life. Just like drunkenness is harmful to your life. And lying is harmful to your life. And being a hard-hearted sinner is harmful to your life. And for all you know, friends, death could come come tomorrow for you. For all you know, friends, death could come tomorrow for you or today for you. The Bible says your life is but a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. That's what your life is like before God, friends. It's a vapor that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. But you ought to walk circumspectly. You ought to walk carefully. Redeem, not as fools, but as wise. So the Word of God says, you ought to walk carefully, you ought to walk circumspectly. Not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Going to a football game is not redeeming the time. Going to a football game is not walking circumspectly. It's not walking carefully. It's walking as a fool, not as wise. It's not redeeming the time, but it's wasting time. What a waste of time. What a waste of money. What a waste of affection. What'd you say, ma'am? What'd you say? 
Yes. What do you say? Yes, the Bible says the woman should be silent. Yes. Most women don't like that Bible verse. But it's the truth. Especially the ungodly, loud mouthed women. They don't like the Bible verse says women should be quiet. Meek and quiet. Most women don't like it they're loud mouths. They're feminists. They rather stand up for women's rights than do what the Bible tells them to do. God commands you to repent. And you think that doesn't apply to everybody, sir? So, so you want to pick and choose what applies to you in the New Testament with us? So it doesn't apply to everybody, then, sir. So, so, so your wife exempt from that, huh? Your wife exempt from that? That's what you're trying to say, sir? You probably say homosexuality is okay too. It's out of the cultural thing, right? No, I'm sorry. The word of God is the word of God, so it'll never pass away. The flower fades and the grass blows, but the word of God endures forever. And you men who are too cowardly to stand up for the truth, you ought not call yourself men, you ought not call yourself Christians. The true man of God will stand up for the truth, no matter the cost to himself. No matter what, Jesus said, if you'll be my disciple, if you'll come after me, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. That's death to you. Death to your desires. Death to what you want to do. And giving your whole life to Christ, surrendering all to Him, and doing, saying, here I am, Lord, send me. That's what being a Christian is. Being a Christian is coming to the Word of God and saying, I'm going I'm to make you say this, and then try to find verses that say that. Being a Christian is coming to the Word of God, seeing what it says, believing it, and obeying because it's God's Word. It's God's Word. You coming to the game day? Yeah, you ought to not come to this game, sir. Because it's a waste of time. It's not redeeming time. The Bible says to walk carefully. I'm going to talk about Jesus. In there? Wherever I go. Are you going to in there to cheer for the, for the players? As you go. As you go. Are you, are you in there to cheer for the players? Probably. Well, I think you should be doing that, sir. You can't love Jesus and be an idolater, sir. You can't love Jesus and be a sinner. I used to be. No, I'm a saint of God, the Bible says. I sure do. That's 1 John 1, he's talking about the Gnostics. But read on the 1 John 2, 3, and 4, sir. You're going to walk away, you're going to read and listen to the Bible. 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 4. Now by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. You'll use 1 John 1 8, sir, but you don't pay attention to the context. You don't pay attention to the rest of the Word of God. You don't pay attention to the fact that the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14, as obedient children, not conforming yourself to your former lust. Former lust. No, I'm not going anywhere, sinner. As in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. The reason to me that Christians will go into this, the best thing Christians will go into a football stadium to cheer on the football players, to cheer on the football team, and say, I'm going to witness for Jesus in the football game. Yeah, right. I seriously doubt that. I seriously doubt that. God is calling you to repentance. 2 Corinthians 6.17 says, Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting the holiness and the fear of God. And right before that, in 2 Corinthians 6, says, What fills him is light and with darkness. Do you have a Christian?
Christian, I have no fellowship with darkness. I have fellowship with what? And I only go into the darkness to bring the light, to expose the darkness. That those in the darkness may repent. That those dressed in modesty may go home and put more clothing on. That those who are getting drunk may put down the beer, pick up the Bible and read and obey it. I knew you'd say that. I knew it was coming. But Jesus didn't get drunk, sinner. He didn't drink Bud Dumber or Miller Low Light. Jesus didn't get drunk. And it gives you no opportunity to get drunk. You create those opportunities for yourself. Put down the beer. Put down the, the, the tequila. Put down the vodka, the rum. Put down all the alcohol and pick up the Bible. What says be sober-minded. Do not be drunk on wine, as in your dissipation. Be filled with the Spirit of God. And guess what one of the fruits of the Spirit is? Self-control. Drunkers have no self-control. That's why they stuck with the driving. That's why they slur their speech. That's why they stumble around when they're walking. Because they have no self-control. Which means they don't have the Spirit of God living in them. Which is why they don't have self-control. We're going to call you out of the darkness into His marvelous light. We're going to call you to repentance. Repent or perish, Jesus said. He said, go and sin no more, lest something worse happen to you. He said to a man who had healed. In John 5, 14, he says, see, you've been made well. Sin no more, lest something worse come upon you. So he made this man well, who was lame, couldn't walk for 38 years, and he said, something worse may happen to you if you keep on sinning. Now in that man's eyes, there's probably nothing worse on earth than to go back to his lame state. Nothing. But there's something worse than that that's beyond this earth, and that's entering into God's condemnation. And God will condemn, God will cast into the lake of fire liars and thieves and drunkards and pot smokers and lustful people. All you men out here tonight to lust after the cheerleaders. All you men out here tonight to lust after the immodestly dressed women here tonight. You're in trouble with God. God sees your lust as adultery. So Jesus said in Matthew 5, 28, You've heard it said of all, you should not commit adultery. But I say to you, whoever looks upon a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery in his heart with her. In the bottom is clear, 1 Corinthians 6, not a town, adulterers will not have inherited the kingdom of God. You need to repent, sir. Get right with God while you still have time. Except the man be born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. Except a man be born again, be born of the Spirit of God. They will not inherit, they will not see the kingdom of God. We had to call you for that of your darkness. Call you out of your sin. Call you to the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ, who came and shed his blood for you on the cross, dying the just for the unjust. He is the, the way. He is the truth. He is the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. He's the only name given under heaven by which man can be saved. His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ wouldn't go to a Tennessee Titans game. He would come there to preach, maybe. But he wouldn't go there to adore the athletes. He wouldn't go there to praise and cheer for the athletes and idolize the athletes. He wouldn't spend $100 on a ticket. He wouldn't spend all that money on the food and beer. Jesus Christ is going to squash L.P. Field when he returns. Everything is highly brought low. Even the mountains will be turned to valleys, the Bible says. Give up your sin, friends. Come to the bloodstained cross of Calvary. Where Jesus Christ shed his blood for you. And he didn't shed his blood for you so you can stay a sinner. Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, gave himself up for our sins that he might deliver you from this present evil age according to the will of my God and Father, who could be your God and Father. Christ came to deliver you from this present evil age, to leave you in this world, to make you 
Some of the world. That's what Christ came to do for you. So we implore you, friends, get right with God. Give up your drunkenness, give up your idolatry of football players and the game of football. Instead of putting all your affection to cheering for someone crossing a white line into the end zone, cheer for Jesus Christ. Give him praise. Give him claps. Give him shouts. He's the only one who deserves it. Football players don't deserve your, your affection and your adoration and your shouts. Jesus Christ deserves it. How do you know you love Jesus Christ with all your heart? Oh my goodness, because he shows me back. He shows me back. I, I know he loves you too. Do you, do, do, do you think you, you, you're loving him with the way you're dressed tonight? Absolutely. Well, I, don't, I don't agree with that. The Bible says that godly women will dress modestly. Okay. You want to know how I could dress him modestly or not? No, when you go before a mirror and you ask the Lord, Lord, is what I'm wearing today pleasing to you? Is what I'm wearing today caused my brother to stumble, Absolutely. caused him to lust after me? That's right. Am I dressed in this way to get man's attention or even woman's attention? Yes. And so I would call, I would ask you humbly to seek after the Lord next. I don't think you're fulfilling that. How, how do I do that better? Uh, you wear loose clothing. You wear more clothing to cover yourself. Okay, that's what clothing's meant for, to cover. It's not meant to uh, reveal certain parts of your body or seduce men's eyes towards you, or cause them to lust after you, call them to cover yourself. And keep yourself for, are you married? No. Keep yourself for a future husband. You know, if, if, when I was single, I thought to myself, well, if, if my future wife was looking down on me right now, would she be pleased with the way I'm dressed? Would she be pleased with the way I'm interacting with people of the opposite sex? Or if, if she was doing the very things that I'm doing, the very way I'm dressing, would I be pleased? with the way she's dressing, would I be pleased with the way she's interacting with the opposite sex if she was doing the very things I'm doing? And if I couldn't say yes to those things, I need to repent. But we, I'll tell you how we can know that we know it. You're claiming to be a Christian, but I want you to examine yourself. I don't know you, but I want you to examine yourself. First John chapter 2, verses 3 through 4 says this. Now by this, we know that we know him. So you're claiming to know Christ, right? Now by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, she who says, I know him, but does not keep the, his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in her. But the commandment is to love the Lord. And if you love Jesus Christ, you'll keep his commandments. John 14, 15. That is the commandment, and to love our neighbors. So, so, yeah, so keeping, loving God means you're not lusting, you're not having sex outside of marriage, you're not getting drunk, you're not lying, you're not stealing, you're not dressing immodestly, you're not idolizing sports stars. That's what loving God means. Yes. And it means you're telling other people the truth, yes. whether they want to hear it or not. You're telling the whole truth. Not just the stuff that's easy to tell them, like, God loves you, God's a wonderful plan for your life. But telling them the hard truth, like, yeah. sinners go to hell. Jokers won't inherit the kingdom of God. Yes. Either both fornicators or liars or thieves. Right. Yes, that's true love for God. Yes. Hey, I love you. I'm, hey, if you pray for me, I'll pray for you. you want to do that? Well, not right now, I'm not going to do that. Nice. I don't pray in public to be seen by men. I pray in my closet, Matthew 6. Okay. Yes. So I can't pray for you. You can pray for me if you want, but not right here in public. Okay. And uh, my wife prays for me. Alright. So God commands you to repent. God bless you, sir. I hope you repent. God is patient even with you, sir. Even with your middle finger sticking up at a servant of God. God is patient with you and wants you to come to repentance. God is long suffering towards sinners. Wanting sinners to come to repentance. Wanting sinners to give up their sins. Wanting sinners to stop being sinners and be saints. Yes, God can transform people. He can change them from fornicators and drunkards and idolaters and thieves and liars to holy people who live for Him and live for Him alone. If you're living for yourself, if you're living for the praise of man, or you love to give men praise, you're not of God. You're not of God. You gotta give God the praise. Only He deserves your praise. Only He deserves your adoration. Not these men, or this guy is white check. He doesn't deserve your praise. 
The guy over there in that post doesn't deserve your praise either. None of these men deserve your praise. They don't deserve your $100 per ticket per game. Jesus Christ! Uh, Muslims go to hell too, sir. I'm sure you're a false god. Are you a Muslim, sir? I don't think you're a real Muslim. I'm here to call you to repentance. Trust in Jesus Christ. as America is full of fornicators, as long as America is full of drunkards, as long as America is full of atheists, as long as America is full of sports idolaters, those who worship athletes and sports and pigskins and touchdowns and field goals, as long as America is full of these things, people who worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is forever blessed, amen, as long as America is full of such things, God can't bless America. All God can do is condemn America. The only way God can actually bless America is America repents. The only way God can bless you is if you forsake your sins. The Bible says Isaiah 55, 6 through 7, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. You hear that? God's pardon, God's forgiveness is conditional upon you forsaking your sin, upon you forsaking your wicked way. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 17 says, Learn to do good. That's in verse 16. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient. The God is willing to treat you like you don't deserve. God is willing to cleanse you of your sins. God is willing to pardon you of your sins. God is willing to take away the punishment of your sins if you'll seek it. If you wash your hands. But the Bible says, draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinner. Purify your heart, you double-minded. Well, men and more and we. That's the part sinners hate. Well, men and more and we. Let your laughter turn to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of God. He will lift you up. Look, most of you don't like humility. You'd rather be prideful. Prideful about your Tennessee type. Prideful about how good they do. That's what God commands you to repent. And God opposes the proud. They give grace to the humble. God's grace is conditional upon your repentance. If you hold on to your sin, any sin, if you cling to your sin, any sin, it'll be your eternal detriment. Because if Christ is not your Lord, He will not be your Savior. And if He's not your Savior, He will be your judge. The righteous judge of all the universe. Because all your thoughts... That's a scary thing. All your thoughts, God knows about them. God knows you men, all you lustful thoughts you have of these immodestly dressed women today. All the lustful thoughts you have while you're watching pornography on your computer. God knows about it. All the hateful thoughts you have. I wonder how many people here in LP Field tonight will take the Lord Jesus Christ's name in vain. Because they didn't like a call a referee made. They didn't like it, the, the call that a referee made because the other team did something wrong. They didn't like I wonder how many people here tonight will take Jesus Christ's name in vain. The Bible says he will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Blasphemers will not inherit the kingdom of God. 
Idolaters will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you spend your time and your money and your affection, your adoration upon football, where men dressed, where grown men dressed in tights, throw around a pigskin and try to cross a white line or kick the pigskin through two yellow poles, you're, you're involved in foolishness. What a waste of a life. This game has no eternal value. And a hundred years from now, when you're dead in the grave, you won't think about this game one bit. When you're on your deathbed or after you die, you won't say, man, I wish I could have gone to more Tennessee Titan games. I wish I could have memorized more stats. I wish I would have known more about Chris Johnson and all the other athletes. When you're on your deathbed or you're in the grave, when you're standing before God on judgment day, you won't say, man, I didn't go to enough Tennessee Titan games. Because God's not going to judge you upon how many games you went to or how many statistics you memorized. God's not going to judge you by how many athletes you idolize and adoration for. God's going to judge you in righteousness. That's why I command all men everywhere to repent. Because come a day when she will judge the world in righteousness. You need righteousness. You need holiness without which no man will see the Lord. You need to forsake your sins and trust in Jesus Christ who died through the cross. Stop wearing the jerseys of idolatry. Get a Jesus shirt on. Promote him instead. It'll cost you a lot less than those foolish jerseys. Of these idols from the past and the idols from the present and the idols of the future. All these jerseys you wear, all these memorabilia hats you wear are not going to be anything in the end, friends. The Bible says, Do not store for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves break into steel. But rather, store for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break into steel. So while you're treasuring up your memorabilia, your jerseys, your hats, your ticket stubs you save, all the stats you have in your head while you're storing up those things, moth and rust will destroy those things. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Your treasure on earth is where your heart is. You're an earthly man, you're a carnal man. Which will be who will be condemned in the end. But you have your mind on the things from above. On eternity. And you do things in the light of eternity. Because when you, when you stand before God, this will, this game will matter nothing then, friends. You, wish, you would have wished you had not gone to the game. You would have wished you had not wasted your money and your time and your affections on this game. You would have wished you would have gone home and sought the Lord instead. You would have wished you would have preached the gospel. Or prayed and read the Bible instead. That's what you would have wished. It brings great joy to your heart to get a ticket to a game. More joy than reading the Word of God, you're in big, big trouble. I go to church on Sunday. Church ain't going to help you, young man. You need to repent. Going to a building on Sunday is not going to help you overcome your idolatry of Tennessee Titans. You need to forsake your sins. For most of you, this is your sanctuary. This is your worship place. This is your church. Because the people and the things you worship are right in there. You come with your holy garments on, your jersey, and your hats. You come with your holy things, you paint your face. But you won't spend two seconds in the Word of God. You won't spend two seconds in the closet in prayer. You won't think about God. You're like those people in the days of Noah. But every intent of the thought of their heart was only evil continually. They didn't think about God, they thought about themselves and about their sin. That's the way most of you are. You're on the broad path that leads to destruction. You get on the narrow path, the difficult path that leads to life. Fornicators can't be on that path. Junkers can't be on that path. Right now, tonight, the narrow path is crossing the broad path. And we're here to call you off of the broad path and come on to the narrow path. And many of you try to give us tickets and try to cross off the narrow path and onto the broad path. And we're here tonight to call you off the broad path. To call you out of your sports idolatry. To call you out of your adoration of men. And to give adoration to Jesus Christ. He shed his blood for you. Chris Johnson didn't shed his blood for you. Jake Walker didn't shed his blood for you. 
None of these players shed their blood for you. None of these players were beaten and bruised and crucified for you. The owner of this team who's making millions of dollars every year off for you didn't shed his blood for you. And Jesus said you can't serve two masters. You either love the one and hate the other, or you be loyal to the one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and riches. You can't serve both God and football. You can't serve both God and fornication. You can't serve both God and drunkenness. Many of you are sports fanatics. You're a fanatic. But for the wrong things. For things that will help you none on Judgment Day. To help you not. On that day. Hebrews 9, 27 talks about that day. The point of man wants to die. And after this comes the judgment. There is no purgatory, friends. There is no hope the other side of the grave for those who die in their sins. There is no hope for the sinner who dies a sinner. Hebrews 4, verse 12, says the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than a two-headed sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. As you hear the word of God preached tonight, it should pierce your heart. It should show you through your con God-given conscience that you're a sinner deserving of hell. That you're a sinner in need of a Savior. And on that day, verse 13 of Hebrews 4 says, And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. All things are naked and open, naked, uncovered, far away back. So open all your sin, all your lust, and your porn watching, all your drunkenness, and your lust. All your sex before marriage. All open and naked and bare. Of the, the one who must give an account. That most of you can care less. They couldn't care less. You go on your sin and cheer on your sin. You pump your fist in the air, cheering on your sin. But on Judgment Day, there'll be no pumping the fist in the air for sin. There'll be a bringing down low for sin. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. For the glory of God the Father. And on Judgment Day, there'll be no cheering, there'll be no clapping of hands, there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But Jesus said in the Gospel, He said, If your hand calls you to sin, all you clap for your favorite stars. Woo! Woo! A favorite star, you pump your fist for your favorite stars. Put your hands. If your hand calls you to sin, you support the idolaters. Cut it off! cast it from you. It's useless to God. It's useless to you and to your soul and to eternity. But you're clapping and you're cheering on. You're pumping your fist in the air for your sports idolatry to send you to hell in the end. And you're watching of the immodest, horse cheerleader. And you're lost after them to send you to hell as well. What's that, sir? You're all right? No, you're not. You're not all right. You're going to a football game. You're smoking a cigarette. You're not all right. You're probably lost the after the cheerleaders right now. You're not all right. You're not okay with God. You're unrighteous before God. And the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God, the Bible says. Yes, you to forsake your sins. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ. He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement for your peace. For the bond is. Because you know what? Right now, if you're a sinner, you're not a peace with God. You're an enemy of God. And I mean the feeling of peace. I mean you're actually an enemy of God if you're a sinner. You have no peace with Him. He is your enemy. You're His enemy. You're on the wrong side. You're on a losing team. You now, if you were playing football, you wouldn't want to be in the last place team. But when it all, when it all matters, when it all comes down to it, you're on the last place team in eternity right now if you're a sinner. You're on the wrong team. And when Christ returns, he's going to destroy his enemies. It's going to be a blowout in sports, sir. You're on the wrong team, friends. Trust in Christ. Christ shed his blood for you. He died for you. He died for the ungodly. At just the right time, in due time, when we're still without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. That's you. He died for the ungodly. He died for the drunkard. He died for the immodestly dressed woman. 
He dies for the fornicator. He dies for the sports idolater. He dies ungodly. And that's a great thing because most people won't even die for a righteous man or a good man. But God demonstrates his own love towards us. And not while you are still sinners, Christ died for us. But Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, gave himself up for our sins. Not so we can continue being sinners. But he might deliver us from the present evil age, the Bible says in Galatians 1 4. The present evil age. Deliver you from this nonsense. This distraction of the devil. This entertainment. This is a dear soul, no good. So we're here to call you to repentance tonight. Give up your sin. Follow Jesus Christ. Put down your fear. Put down your, your jerseys and your signs and your face paint and follow Jesus Christ. Pick up your cross. Deny yourself daily and follow Him.